Welcome to our webinar on the Gannett Programming Studio, also known as GPS. This is an introduction to GPS, so I'll show you the highlights and talk about the things that it can do in general, and then I'll show you a specific feature I like very much and give you a live demonstration of that. GPS is our flagship IDE, and it's available on several platforms, multiple versions of Linux, of Windows, OS X, and Solaris too. It supports native, cross, and bareboard development with the same look and feel, so everything that you know about native use of GPS also applies to cross and bareboard development too. It provides fully symbolic source level debugging and supports in particular ADA 2012 and all prior versions of ADA as well. But it also supports C, C++, and Python. The first time you bring up GPS, this is what you'll see. This is the default color scheme, the default layout. It's an MDI application, so it has a menu bar, toolbar, and multiple views within. Over at the far left, we've got the so-called project view that shows you the information about your project. Stacked behind that are the outline views and the and scenario views. In the middle is called a workspace. Typically, it contains source files, but it can contain other things, as you see here, too. It will also contain, for instance, representations graphically of the relationships between the packages in your program, should you choose to ask for it. So, browsers, in other words. Down at the bottom, we have the message view. There will also be some other views behind that as we go. And in particular, GPS is integrated with the GNAP project files, the GPR files. So it graphically presents to you whatever the project file specifies. So you would see the source directories. You would see the relationships to other projects, because of course, GPR files, GNAP project files, support subsystems. So you can have project files that relate to other project files and reference them. You could see the object and executable directories, and so on. And it will also build per the project's file settings. It'll use the specified tool chain, for example, and the switches that are to be applied either by default for all the files or, or uh, for specific files, for that matter. And it presents graphically the scenario variables for the controlling of the behavior of your project, either the, the build, the naming, and so on. So you would have compilation switches, source file selection, user-defined values, whatever it is. Your scenario variables are presented to you in a view. So over here on the left in the project view, we have the project name as an icon, and this one in this case is called Amazing because it's a concurrent maze solver. But underneath it, we have the source directories, amongst others. So we have a directory called source, which is an entry in the source's attribute, and then underneath that, the source files for the languages that our project file specifies. So if you have C files and native files and C++ files, for instance, you would see all those files in these directories. In this case, I have only ADA files, so only ADA files are presented. If there were other files in those directories, they would not be shown to you. Notice that I've drilled down in the search team. I've expanded it, so we see that it's got a package and a subprogram and a task, that sort of thing. That is more likely to be useful in the outline view, which you'll see in a moment, but it's capable here, too. Underneath the source directory, there are also source consoles and utils, so those are presented, too. Likewise, the executable directory, the exact error attribute entry, and the objects directory, if there are specified, are again presented to you graphically. Notice the blue line there on mice. So mice.adb is, is the current file that's open. So clicking on the files within the project view will open those files in the workspace area. GPS is highly configurable and extensible. Of course, you can use your own color themes, your own fonts. You can control the layout for the window panes within the application. I'll show you that in a moment. You can create your own actions, GPS, in other words, editor actions, within the menu entries. And these can be written in Python when it's appropriate. We have a full Python interpreter embedded within GPS. You can define your own editor text expansions. These are, these are called aliases. And they can be parameterized if necessary. These can be little things or big things. There are predefined expansions, for instance, for the constructs within, within the language, both uh, statements and type definitions and so on, but you can make up your own, too. And you can define your own keyboard key assignments for the actions that are either built-in or user-defined. 
a lot of the actions in GPS don't necessarily have predefined key assignments, but you can make up your own. So this shows my tent, my typical standard layout. And this is my typical standard color scheme as well. So I've got the project view over there on the left. The scenario view has been moved down to the bottom. And the outline view is over there on the right. Because typically I want to see all of those without having to click on the tabs to get to them. But you can use any layout that you want. In, in fact, you can have these windows uh, floating if that's the, the scheme that you prefer to use most of the time. Naturally, GPS supports language sensitive editing with the usual stuff like syntax highlighting for the construct specifics. So constructs that are uh, reserved words, for instance, can have different colors from other things. But for instance, types can have their own colors if that's something you want to have a, a highlight for. It'll automatically indent based on language syntax and surrounding code. And it'll do that as you type if you choose. So it'll automatically indent. It'll change the letter casings of reserved words and user defined identifiers and the colors, that sort of thing. And it supports scope folding, as it's called, to allied syntax-defined blocks of code. So if you don't need to see the body of a given procedure, for instance, you could tell the editor to collapse that, or a while loop, or an if statement, that sort of thing. GPS also supports refactoring for entity renaming and subprogram extraction. And it has semantics-based completion for both words and constructs, the so-called smart completion that I like so much, and that I'll give you a demonstration for shortly. GPS also supports source navigation for Ada, C, and C++. And in particular, it supports hyperlinks that allow project-wide traversal. So basically, whenever you hold down the control key and then move the mouse over an entity, that entity becomes a hyperlink, and you can go directly to the definition of that entity just by clicking on it with the mouse. It'll then open up that file, no matter where it is in the project, and take you to the definition of that entity. So you could visit the declaration for a given name, or the body of a routine, or the completion of a private type, whatever it is. That includes, though, language-defined entities, too. So if you wanted to see the body of text.io put line, for instance, you could do that. Naturally, contextual menus are tailored for navigating to the current entity underneath the, uh, the cursor. But we also support dynamic dispatching calls and highlight them. Naturally, uh, you don't always see that in it. It's not so obvious that a call is dispatching. So having them highlighted is a good way to find them all very easily. And we also have traversable call graphs that show the entity relationships. These are the things that would show up in that workspace area, for instance. So you could see who calls this routine graphically, or the inverse. Show me all the routines that this one calls, and traverse through it by clicking on them as you go and expanding as you go and going to the corresponding source files just by clicking on the nodes within the graphs. And we also have something called tooltips that pop up to show semantic information. And I like these so much I wanted to show you a specific example of that. So here I've got my editor open on a procedure called mice and I've got the cursor hovered over the word generate. I haven't clicked on it, I've just moved the cursor over it. And after a user-defined amount of time this pop-up will show what that thing is what the thing underneath the cursor is. So in this case, it's a procedure declared at mazefactory.ads line 3. So immediately find out what it is and where it is. And if you have a comment associated with the definition of that entity, it'll be repeated here. So we see why you would want to call the thing. We generate a new maze, in other words, with this procedure. And in, in addition to that, you see how to call the thing, too. It shows you the formal parameters, their names, modes, types. And it indicates, in this case, that perfect is the name of a formal parameter, but it has a default value, so you don't have to pass an actual to it when you call it, when you call it generate, unless you need to. The GPS builder uses the multi-language builder, GPR build, by default. So it has built-in support for Ada, C, C++, and assembly, but also you could define your own languages in there as well, and GPR build would build for them too. Essentially, we can support any compiler called by a command line. So we've got built-in support for GNAT, GCC, and Make. It provides easy navigation through the error messages. So when an, an error does appear in your code, uh, basically you just click on the line showing you that error message, and it'll take you to that file, opening it if necessary, and, and uh, take you to, right to the line that's got the problem. 
And we also have something called code fixing that fixes your code automatically for you. It's manually invoked, but it automatically types in the fix, if you will. So very briefly, what that looks like here in this case, on line 60, I've removed the semicolon at the end of the end if and then built. The builder highlights that line and I've clicked on that little wrench icon, uh, that little white thing there. Once you see it larger, you can tell that it's a wrench. And it says the fix for this is to insert the missing semicolon. So if you click on the wrench icon and tell it that you want to do that, it'll insert that semicolon for you automatically. And it'll do little things like that, but bigger things as well. Uh, but there's never any kind of, of concern about it invoking uh, the wrong kind of procedure or doing the wrong kind of fix. You have complete control over the, the fixes that are applied. GPS is integrated with external tools, both user-defined and, of course, things that we define as within AdaCore as well. So you have automatic support for various version control systems, Git, Subversion, CVS, ClearCase, so on. But you can create your own tool-specific integrations to the GUI as well. So essentially, you, you say, for this GUI, here are the ac actions that it wants to perform. Here's how I do a checkout. Here's how I, how I do a show the log operation, that sort of thing. So you define how those things relate to the GUI, and the GUI will call them for you automatically. So it doesn't have to be just these language-defined, uh, or sorry, AdaCore-defined uh, version control systems. But of course, we've got GNAT-specific tools that we support, too. So there's CodePeer and Spark and GNAT Test and so on. But user-defined tools can be invoked as well. So you can make up your own in actions and give them a menu entry if you wanted to, and they could go off and invoke your tools for you. Naturally, we support symbolic debugging. It's built into GPS as a different perspective. By perspective, I mean that you've got additional views that will open up automatically, different uh, and additional toolbar icons that appear, that sort of thing. You don't have to open these views yourself. It'll do it. Uh, GPS will do it for you automatically. What you're getting then is a graphical interface to GDB, but it's a GDB that's been enhanced to be ADA aware. So it knows task states, for instance, and presents those to you. Not just thread states, but task states. You know, this particular task is waiting for a rendezvous call, for instance. This one's in a delay statement, that sort of thing. It's also a GDB that understands uh, understands ADA's types. So more advanced types, maybe like a discriminated record type, for instance. It knows how to present that to you. But it's the same interface for native cross and bare board targets. Maybe it's an extra setup, uh, setup step, kind of depends on what you're doing. But everything that you know about native debugging also applies to cross and bareboard debugging under GPS. And then finally, for those things that don't have a GUI uh, driver for them, there's a GDB console that's included, and therefore you can just type in the arbitrary GDB command and have it uh, talk to the GDB server for you. So now what I'd like to do is show you the uh, smart completion demo and uh, give you a feel for what its capabilities are.